friends, and welcome to an impromptu book haul and a little something special. A little something special. Now, like any good husband, I was out shopping for my wife's birthday present. And as any good husband, I bought myself a bunch of stuff. So let's look at the books I got, yeah? Okay, let's look at the books I got. So, what? What? You're gonna have to wait for it, I'm doing a book haul. Yeah. So, um, where should I start? Oh, I will start here. After seeing the awesome live stream that um, Market Richardson Reads and Steve Donahue did, and um, in one of them, I think they did like two or three actually, but in one of them, there was a throwaway comment about an awesome western series that I was not familiar with and after hearing what they said about it I said hmm I think I would like that so I went to this bookstore um, after going to three other bookstores that actually aren't there anymore and they had a whole shelf of these and I just grabbed one at random Long Arm and Big Lips Lily. Long Arm number 282 by Tabor Evans. Long Arm will have to pay some lip service to this sassy senorita. Hell yeah, we say. Are we right? Okay. Zoe actually saw this and thought, yeah, she wants to read it too. A lily-livered town. When two prominent politicos turn up dead, one self-righteous Arizona town pins it on the local madam, Big Lips Lily, faster than she can say, not guilty. So Deputy U.S. Marshal Curtis Long hurries on down to ensure that justice is carried out. Unfortunately, Long Arm's train ride down to Williams, Arizona takes a mite longer than it should. What with three murderers on board and an avalanche on the train tracks, but Long Arm reckons he could pass the time, seeing as how one pretty traveler is paying a pretty penny to share a berth with him. <laughs> Am I right, babe? Babe, will you say something to the good people? I'm reading. You could read with all this going on. Yeah, I've managed to zone you out. <laughs> what are you reading over there? Galapagos. By? Kurt Vonnegut. Very nice. Um, and while I was waiting at this bookstore for um, reasons you will find out about soon. Um, I was in their western section, obviously, because I found Long Arm. Um, but I noticed they had a bunch of Johnstones there, too. So, um, I just finished reading the first Flintlock book. And if you recall, um, like last week, I read the fifth one or something. But I got um, Flintlock Gutshot, which is the second Flintlock book. And Flintlock Kill or Die, which is the third Flintlock book. Um, these covers aren't great. No one's acting like they are here. This one's a little bit better. Um, this is the, I believe, the second Chuck Wagon Trail Western. Um, Die by the Gun. Um, I finished the first one of these last week as well. So, um, uh oh, that's some big breeze. Um, 
I am getting this confused with the two Pearly Gates books in my head, so I'm going to have to, like, look through these again. Um, actually, I could just read this to you. Dewey Mac McKenzie is wanted for a killing he didn't commit. That's right. He saved his hide once by signing on as a cattle drive chuck wagon cook and bolting the territories. Turned out Mac was good at fixing the vitties as he was as dodging bullets. But Mac's enemies are hungry for more and they've hired a gang of ruthless killers to turn up the heat. Ah, that's kind of cool. And I think I know who those people are. And then for those of you who don't know what Flintlock's about, it's a, uh, um, it's an awesome dude. <laughs> I'm horrible. He's got a Thunderbird tattooed on his throat, and um, his dead grandpa talks to him, and he's trying to find his mom so he could find what his real name is, and then he gets into adventures. So. That's pretty cool. Now, <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to talk to you guys about, um, I got a handful of books, and they're all in the same series. And the reason why I got them is because <clears throat> I've been listening to a podcast that um, I was turned on to by Eric Peterson. So, a big thank you to Eric for that one. But it is called... Um, Oh my gosh, I almost said the wrong podcast. It is Paperback Warrior. <clears throat> and they do a lot of um, 50s and 60s and 70s uh, fiction. But a lot of it seems to be um, men's adventure or noir um, that's pretty much what I've gotten out of the show so far. Um, but it is really fun. I really like it. It's very um, to the point. And I could honestly listen to them like freeform that for an hour and a half or two hours every week. So it's only like a half hour a week. But um, it's really cool. And they were talking about um, a series that I've always seen in bookstores but never read any of and I remember a while back I was asking if they were any good and I remember Eric talking to me about it a little bit um, but they had a whole episode about um, the executioner Mac Bolin by um, Don Pendleton and they were talking about how like the first like 30 books I think they said 30 were written by him and kind of had a through line um arc and then after that um he had a falling out with the publisher and it just kind of got a little muddied from there so the first 30 books except for book 16 were all written by don pendleton so i really um after hearing them talk about it, i got really excited about it and i'm like look if they have the first book at um the bookstore i'll pick that up and then give it a shot. <clears throat> they had an enormous number of these books. Because I, I don't know exactly how many there is. But um, I was seeing up into the 400 and something um, numbers. But I went and I got the earliest ones they had. So I got number three, Battle Mask. Number four, Miami Massacre. And these are in great shape. I mean, that spine isn't even cracked. Um, number five, Continental Contract. Huh? Huh? Um, number six, Assault on Soho. Number seven, Nightmare in New York. Huh? Huh? Number eight, Chicago Wipeout. And number nine, Vegas Vendetta. Um, so I need one, two, and ten to get the first ten. So um, I'm going to 
hunt down the first book and start that one before I get to these. But there was one last book I got, and it was just because they were talking about on the podcast um, that there was one later one that was really cool because um, Mac Bolin gets um, actually caught and arrested, and it is The Trial. So this is Executioner 91. Um, I am not their judge. I am their judgment. I am their executioner. Dun, dun, dun. So I'm going to give this one a go as well. Um, so those were the books I got. But what I wanted to talk to you all about, if you saw in the title of this, um, on that podcast, on one of the episodes... They were talking about a good way <clears throat> to collect um, these vintage paperbacks and stuff is to do something called a trade box where you fill up a box with like 10 or 15 books and you find a bunch of people who are interested in doing this and wanting to do this and then you mail that box to them and the person who gets the box can then take out and keep as many books from that box that they want, but everything they take out, they have to replace with something else or more. So, um, as you keep doing this, you keep, um, building up books, um, and hopefully people are putting more in than they take. So there's always, Oh, that's not good. What are you going to do? Oh my god! Hey! What's up? She's so bad. My kitchen! Come on! Our, um, almost got ripped off because a big gust came and somehow that's my fault I'm not quite sure how I control no, the just, weather you, no you're just being a drama queen again flapped, that was bad it flapped a bit babe <laughs> it did more than flap it a bit a lot. sir flap a lot over there right okay so anyway if anyone is interested in doing this trade box with me, let me know, um, and I'll start putting a box together stat. And um, shipping media mail is like, depending on the size of the box, is going to be in between five and probably eight or nine bucks. Um, so, I mean, if you're getting a bunch of books for five bucks that ain't bad um so but let's try to keep it um as vintage as possible on the paperback side like um like pre-2000 if there's some like really awesome like horror books or something that you want to put in there from the 90s or something like that um, that's fine too, but any kind of, um, genre, so sci-fi, no romance, no Danielle Steele, none of that hogwash, but, um, you know, Western sci-fi, crime, mystery, um, whatever, and we'll just, like, do a constantly rotating shipment, and so you'll always get a box with books in it. Um, so if you want to do that, let me know down below. And um, I'll contact you, and we'll try to figure out um, how to put this all together. So anyway, um, let me know down below if you've read any of these books, what you think of them. Um, and if you think I got any lemons in there. And pretty soon, Zoe will be doing a book haul too. So that'll be exciting. And hopefully there won't be any tears. Alright, so we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.